Morning everybody. So what I'm going to do today is to talk about mark making and do some demonstrations and just explain some of the ways in which I do things. Um, so making lines and marks is pretty important in creating interesting sketches and drawings, uh, what, however we, we create them really, whether they're representational or whether they're more abstract. And it's that kind of variety and appropriateness of the lines really and marks that makes for interesting drawings and, and individual drawings that are clearly our own. Um, and with this in mind, it's, it's pretty important to, to become familiar with the different um, tools that we use um, and their feel on the paper and their softness and hardness and all of those things and how they behave in different circumstances, how we can make them behave differently depending on um, how we use them. So this is just a couple of pages that I've created um, just to show you some differences really. Um, so I've got here, I've got charcoal, oil pastel, oil pastel markers, uh, graphite sticks, um, and on here I've got a dip pen and ink, um, this one is a Posca marker, this is Conte. And it kind of doesn't matter what you've got, it's just, you know, use what you've got um, and start to think about um, how they behave on the paper and how you can change how they, they behave depending on how hard you, you push down on the paper and so on. Um, so I'll just quickly show you um, what I mean by that. And what is really good to do is to, to create something like I've done here really, in whatever way you want to, it can be done in little squares. If you want to be neat, you can just do them across the page or however you want really. Um, but suffice to say, let me just put those to one side and then I'll just quickly show you um, what I mean. So say I was going to um, be interested in, uh, I don't know, some Conte. Um, what is really useful to know is how it kind of behaves on the different paper. So I'm pressing here sort of U normal and you can see the kind of line that you get. And I could, could be a lot, a lot gentler and you get a very much more tentative line, much more of a sort of spidery line. Or I could be really, really you know, intense with it and really kind of almost angry with it um, and push it into the paper and I could smudge it as well and it pays then quite differently so you can see even with just that how differently you can create the marks even with one particular tool and it's just really useful to kind of explore your different uh, materials that you've got uh, and try them in different ways. So you could, you know, you could create graceful lines, awkward lines, jerky lines, um, scribbly lines, you know, all sorts of things, um, and very tentative lines, as I've said. So if you can kind of keep that in mind and then explore the different ways that the materials work, uh, it stands you in good stead then to make interesting drawings of variety uh, using different uh, marks depending on what it is you're trying to draw and what you're trying to emphasize. So that's one thing I wanted to, sh to say. I'll put that to one side um, and then what I just wanted to do is to show you a couple of drawings uh, that actually kind of use different uh, tools. So this one um, is a view out the window. We're not going to do a view out of the window today because in my little uh, new uh, purpose studio here at home uh, I don't have a very good view to draw from. But this was actually done from my studio window um, and you can see the different mark making that's in here. So I've got um, ink that I've smudged with a cloth, I've used a charcoal that I've used quite sort of harshly, I've got little spidery dotty lines and then I've, I've got leaves here that I've done using a dip pen, um, which I've got here, and some ink. So you can see the sorts of marks I've created using it in that way. Um, so it's all, all different marks, but I think you can, you can see how that variety of mark making makes for a more interesting uh, composition and drawing. Um, and it's using the different weights to create the different sorts of emphasis. So when I use this really darkly, this actually was a sh was in shadow and quite intense undergrowth. And I just sort of decided to use, use that sort of intensity and rub into the paper to create that. Um, and similarly with the leaves, I wanted, because they were the closest thing to me, um, it, I wanted to create a sort of 
outlines that you could see and you could see those leaves uh, and going into the distance they get fainter because you know as they get further away um, you don't uh, see the detail as much so it's just messing around really and trying different things uh, and being quite kind of experimental about it not uh, worrying too much just trying different things out and we'll talk about different techniques of drawing on, an, on another video. But this I'm just looking at exploring the different ways you can make the marks and how that is interesting when you've got a variety of different things you want to draw and how you can use uh, those different marks to your advantage in the drawing. So that's one example. And then this one is a much simpler example. It's a hanging plant uh, in a window. Um, and I've just used three different things here. I've used a biro. I've used some Conte and then I've just used a graphite for the window. But the interesting thing about this is that because I've used those different, this uh, biro enables me to create quite a lot of the detail of this hanging woven um, stringy thing that's holding up the spider plant. You can hear my technical explanation here. Um, anyway, um, so, so that enabled me to do that. And then the spider plant is, it's got some quite sort of chunky leathery leaves on it. So the kind of charcoal kind of works in comparison and contrast with uh, the more delicate um, line of the biro where you can actually use more detail. Uh, and then the, 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 the graphite work, was, was something which I knew would I could use quite faintly and delicately just to kind of push that kind of window into it's there but it's not it's only just there you know it's in the background um, so that's how I've used it there so what I wanted to do now is just to show you something really so I've got I don't know if you can see I will move them now into view but um, in uh, a couple of years time uh, I have a big exhibition um, which is uh, all about different types of natural environments. And this is quite pertinent uh, because those natural environments we're gonna be focusing on are moorland, woodland, and coast uh, line. And these actually are all uh, materials uh, from uh, those three different types of landscape. And I thought I'd kind of just use these um, just to sort of demonstrate using different materials to create a different sorts of sorts of uh, lines and, and marks really. Um, so I'm going to use, and I'll go through these materials, I might not use all of them, but just share them with you. I've got some Conte here, uh, makes for quite nice dark uh, lines. Uh, it's more kind of uh, compressed and condensed than charcoal. I've also got some charcoal here, uh, which is quite a nice loose material, uh, creates again real dark, uh, loose lines. It's not really that great for creating detail, but it's great for creating dark lines. I've also got my favourite acrylic black ink here, magic, um, together with a dip pen um, and uh, I've got a graphite stick here um, which I may or may not use. I've got some oil pastels um, and I have got some art graft which is compressed uh, graphite and if you wet it you can kind of create an intensity of, of colour. Um, so I might not use all of them. I've also got some spray because I will sort of use that as well. Um, so what I was just really wanting to show you is nothing more than just how that you can use the different materials to create these different marks that might be useful in terms of representing different things. Now you don't have to do anything like this if you, you know, what is great is, is to do whatever you've got around, the one uh, things that are interesting to you. They might be in your house, you might have a lovely vase of flowers, you might have a great view out the window. Um, and all of those things are great. I mean, this is everyday story, so it's whatever you want to use. I thought I'd use these just really to sort of show you um, you know the sorts of things you can achieve and it's not it doesn't have to be a representational drawing as such um, it, it can just be the weights and the marks that you think are reflected in those materials so for me I'm not going to try and draw this all to scale and all in that same arrangement I'm just going to use the things on there to sort of make some marks and try and show those different marks and how they can reflect those different materials I've got um, so I'm going to make a start. Um, I'm only going to do it for a couple of minutes because uh, otherwise it will get really boring for you. Um, 
I'm going to start actually with this with this really chunky thing um, just because it's really quite sort of dense and sort of strong in comparison to other more delicate things so I'm going to try and reflect that in the sorts of uh, marks I make um, I might start actually with some uh, some charcoal and I'm as I say it's not necessarily representational as such I'm just trying to reflect you know the chunkiness of this the sort of the strength of this against other elements um it's not um might smudge it i can smudge this line and make it more um and i'm probably going to put some ink on it because i want it to be really really strong i'm really interested in all of these knotty things going on here I should be using my dip pen, I'm being lazy and I'm just using the the, the um, pipette thing that's with the ink. Um, and I'm probably going to smudge it and I'm trying to create that kind of knottiness. Can you see how I'm kind of trying to be quite intense with the way I'm doing it? Because that's quite an intense sort of strong thing. And then I might add some water. I might not go too mad with the water because otherwise it'll go everywhere and I won't have any space for anything else. I quite, I've got quite interested in the colour here, so I'm going to put some brown in. I'm quite interested in that leathery thing that goes on there. So I'm quite being quite loose with it. I'm not trying to to do it um, completely representationally. I'm trying to sort of show the kind of energy of it, if you like. Um, and then I'm going to change track because that's a really chunky thing that's sort of taking up lots of space. I want this to be really quite... You see I'm going to make my own a nice mess there. Um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to move on to some of these much more delicate things so you can kind of see. So with this twiggy thing, I'm going to use a 2B pencil actually. Um, this twiggy thing here, I don't know if you can sort of see it, um it's uh put it in the camera so it's quite different to how how um that piece that is actually um some dried out seaweed um so i'm going to to, to do this in quite some contrast can you see how differently i'm doing it and being quite tentative not worrying about things overlapping i'm trying to just reflect these different spidery lines of this I think it might be some dried out hedgerow. Definitely comes from the coastal path. And can you see how I'm just trying to be quite sort of spidery with it? And I'm not trying to be too... I'm almost trying to pretend I am that thing. And I'm trying to see how it's wandering and meandering. And I'm following the edges a little bit. With my eyes, I'm marking. So I'm trying to get the, sort of the, the spideriness of it. And the, some of it is chunky, in which case I can mark it a bit harder so you can see how I'm using it differently. Um, and then the delicate little branches kind of go off and as they get further away from that central bit, which is a bit more chunky, they become much more fine and spidery so hopefully you can see how that's kind of playing out i'll kind of leave that one now because i want to go on to some other things so now i'm going to do to look at these these things here um so i'm going to first of all i'm just going to sort of make some marks because i'm going to spray this and i'm just trying to get some sense really of the colour. This is the th the only the, the final thing I'm going to do because otherwise I'm going to run out of time here. So I'm going to spray that, and then I'm going to come in and use some lines over it just to sort of give you that idea of those different things. So hopefully you can see how I'm using these tools in quite different ways and. Um, it's not going to necessarily be that representational, but I'm just showing you how differently you can use the tools and how different tools create different marks. Um, not particularly successful, but you can see how that 
those things are all in contrast to each other, which is the important thing. So why not have a go? See how you can find things out in your around your environment and uh, use different marks, different tools and uh, see how it all works. And I'll be sharing my work as I do it uh, this week uh, using mark making uh, under the hashtag um, everyday stories. So please join me. Thanks a lot.